Hey, 9th Gen Civic, this is Andy Stallworth of andystallworth.com and uh, had a lot of requests to make a video on how to heal and tow and specifically how to drive your Civic SIs. Um, really quickly, I just want to go over that this is an advanced racing technique. Um, this is not something I would really recommend you do on a daily basis in your daily driver for the simple reason that the best way to stop is to push the brake pedal and put the clutch in before the car comes to a stop. That way you're not wearing your transmission, you're not having to worry about you know, missing a gear or doing anything like that. Um, definitely would not recommend doing this in a parking lot, um, as someone said, just because you have to get to pretty high RPMs and pretty decent speeds. Um, this is something that's done uh, pretty much at threshold braking, which means you're braking as hard as the car possibly can. Uh, so one thing you really don't have to worry about is over revving the car because if you're slowing down the chances of over revving it are pretty slim. Okay, so as I said, this is a racing technique. Uh, this is probably not something you want to do every day as you're driving. Um, but for all those people that want to learn a little bit more how to drive their car or are seriously considering doing a high performance uh, driver's education event, this is something you're going to want to know how to do. And you really can't practice as you're going into a brake zone on a racetrack. It's something you need to kind of develop the skills for on the street. Then the driving on a racetrack is almost the practical test for it. Um, why do we do it? Um, believe it or not, it's not so much to help slow the car down when you're braking as it is to get the car into the next gear at the RPM you want it without jerking the tires especially on a rear-wheel drive car. Now, I know this video is a little bit more for Honda Civics, where it's front-wheel drive, but the worst thing you can do is snatch the car, get the back end to want to start coming around. In a Civic, it's obviously not going to be the back end, it's going to be the front end that's going to get squirrely, but that's still going to mess you up as you transition into a turn. Um, I like to say to a lot of students on racetracks that the car can do a lot more than you think it can if you ask nicely. It's when you start demanding stuff from your car that it starts to get upset. So the goal here is to do everything as absolutely smoothly as possible. Which also brings me to my next point of that doesn't mean as fast as possible. I've seen a lot of people go through transmissions, clutches, because they're convinced they have to shift as fast as possible. I don't shift fast. Whether it's a driver's ed event or a race. Everything is done smoothly and precisely and in the order I want to do it in, but I'm not shoving into gears, I'm not doing anything hard or fast. Alright, so before we show you guys uh, how to do this on the road, uh, I just wanted to take a second with the car stopped to be able to go over the motions uh, slowly and thoroughly. Um, basically, as I said, this is something you're going to do when you're braking, so your foot is probably always going to be on the brake when you're actually heeling and towing. Uh, these days, most modern cars don't even think about double clutching. I know a lot of people are going to bring that up. Uh, it's something for cars built in the 60s and 70s for the most part. You will virtually never see anybody doing it on a racetrack, so don't worry about that. Um, as I said, what you want to try to do is do everything precisely. Not rush, not try to shove it into gear. You probably don't want to end up doing this going into first gear. First gear is really just to get moving. Um, the other thing that you want to consider is transmissions like to go into and out of gear as the RPMs are falling. And I like to, a lot of times, you're not shoving it into gear, you're just waiting, waiting, and you feel it want to slip in. That doesn't mean, you know, take forever and not get it in gear but you don't want to force it. That's one of the worst things you can do and a good way to mess up your synchros at best, at worst, you know, the gears in your transmission. So anyway, we're going to assume you're going down a straight, you're a full throttle, and you're in, well, let's say we're in fourth gear, and we want to do one or two downshifts. Well, you're going to get into the braking zone, transition to the brake. Now, depending on the size and shape of your feet, this may be a little bit different for every person. Um, if you've got size 12 triple E clod hoppers, as my dad used to say like I do, what I like to do is I put the ball of my foot, a little bit of my big toe, on the brake pedal, and that's what I'm pushing the brake pedal with. And most modern cars are about the same in terms of brake pedal configuration. Older cars, sometimes you'd have to really kick your heel out 
And in this case, if I did that, I wouldn't be hitting the gas pedal, I'd be hitting the side of the car. So I tend to just roll it a little bit, and I roll it over with the side of my foot. So if I'm on the straight, I transition to the brakes, I get the clutch in, I kick the gas pedal, I get it in gear, let the clutch out, and then do it again for the next downshift, assuming I was going from fourth to second. And then you're off the brakes, back on the gas, and into the turn. So it's not that complicated, it's just something you have to learn to do very coordinated and smoothly, and that way not get the car upset. So now, uh, let's go do it on the road. Uh, one other thing to consider uh, when you're going to be practicing healing and towing is your seating position. Uh, it's something we go over you know, with a lot of students on racetracks, and you know, most people will sit fairly reclined, maybe they're leaning, you know, maybe they just have one hand on the steering wheel. Um, nine and three. I don't care what anybody says, hands at nine and three. You want to be fairly upright and erect. Um, if you can't put your arms out and have the steering wheel touch your wrist or a little bit farther back, you're too far away. And the same thing for your feet. You don't want to be reaching to where you're not really sure you can get the clutch all the way in. You're worried about can you hit the gas pedal or not. Um, you want your feet to be right where you need them and not have to be reaching. Same thing with your hands. All right, so really quickly, I'm gonna show you what is not a heel and tip. Uh, not that this is necessarily gonna hurt anything, so we're not gonna really do anything crazy, but just to give you an idea. So, and you can even do this to just practice a little bit and get the idea of what's going on. So, let's say you're just cruising along and you wanna to go to a lower gear. Now, the lower RPM you're in, the less this is gonna matter, but, Let's say you start to get up more RPMs a little bit, then you want to go to a lower gear and you just shift and drop it. Look what happened. The car jerks, the RPMs jerk, and that's bad for everything. It's bad for upsetting the car, it's bad for yanking the motor to a higher RPM. But again, let's say I want to do the same thing and I don't want to brake. Well, I pull the clutch in, I blip it, and look how amazingly smooth that was. The RPMs are right where they need to be, the car is decelerating on its own even though I'm not braking because it's engine braking, and everything is smooth. Alright, so as I said, I don't recommend doing anything crazy or stupid on public roads. It's obviously crazy and stupid and you can hurt yourself or someone else. But, let's do some healing and towing. Check, 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 yo.